Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we will learn about the wall falling algorithm to navigate through a maze and escape to the exit. It can be a robot navigating through a maze. This is one sample output of the program we will be developing and we can easily change the size of the maze and every time a new random maze will be generated. So let's get started. Let's first see how the wall falling algorithm works. This is the maze we will consider to understand the algorithm. This is the start cell and this is the exit of the goal cell. Consider yourself stuck in this cell and you have to reach to the goal cell. The wall falling algorithm says that you should stick to a wall and just keep falling that wall and you will eventually reach to the exit, provided there is a path to the exit. You can follow the right wall or the left wall. Let me show you the working of the algorithm by considering the robot or agent of this shape. I will follow the left wall, so I have placed a red color mark on the left side. So we are in this start cell and we will slide towards the left side wall and will follow this wall. When we reach here, the wall is turning towards left, so we will also turn in that direction. We will keep following the left wall. Now again we need to turn and then follow the wall. And so on we will keep following the wall on our left side and will turn accordingly. Now we are heading towards a dead end, but see that by following the left wall, we will come out of the dead end. And so on until we reach the exit cell. Let's understand the logic of this algorithm and then we will implement this in Python. To follow the left wall, we need to consider different possibilities. Here is the flowchart of the algorithm that covers all possibilities. The first possibility can be the case when there is a wall on the left side of the agent and the front side is open. In such case, you need to move forward. This is also the same case that there is a wall on the left side and the forward direction is open and again we need to move forward. Similarly are these cases. It is presented in the flowchart. If we haven't reached the goal cell, we will check if there is wall on the left side. If yes, we will check if there is no wall on the front, we will move forward. The next possibility is when there is a wall on the left side, but there is also a wall on the front as shown here. In that case, we need to rotate clockwise. In the next iteration of the algorithm with the wall on the left side and the front open, it will move forward. Same is the case here. If there is wall on the left side and front is not open, we need to rotate clockwise. These are also the same situations and we need the same action. It is shown in the flowchart here. The last possibility can be the case when there is no wall on the left side, then we need to rotate counterclockwise and move forward. If we have this kind of a situation, still the algorithm will resolve it. There is no wall on the left side, so rotate counterclockwise and move forward. Now again there is no wall on the left side, so in next iteration again rotate counterclockwise and move forward. And then so on the algorithm will continue. It is shown here in the flowchart. Now it's time to implement the algorithm in Python. We will be using a Python package named as PyAmaze. This is the module we created to assist in the maze generation and visualization. You can install this package as pip install pyamaze. Or you can copy the module code provided in the description and create a file pyamaze.py inside the working directory and paste the code in the file pyamaze.py. There was a detailed video on the use of this module pyamaze. If you haven't watched the video, still you can continue since it is quite easy to use this module. Let's first see a little basics of this package to generate a random maze and then we will implement wall following algorithm on the generated maze. For that we will import the class maze from the module pyamaze. We will create the maze object and will specify some size for example 6x6 or any other size. Then we need to apply the method create maze on the maze object to create the maze. Then the last statement is the run function to run the simulation. If we run this code, this is the randomly generated 6x6 maze. 
Every time we will run the code, it will generate a new random 6x6 maze. Also keep in mind the indices of the cells of the maze as row number and column number. And also note that this last row column cell is the start cell and the first cell is the goal cell by default. Although we can easily change those if we want. Moreover, the generated maze is a perfect maze, meaning that there is just one path from the start cell to the goal cell. But we can pass the optional input argument loop percent and set the percentage of loops in the path. For example, 100 means there will be maximum loops in the path. You can see multiple paths from start to goal. The maze attributes you need to know in order to implement the wall following algorithm are rows for the number of the rows of the maze, which for this case will be 6. Calls is the number of columns of the maze. Then there is one very important attribute maze underscore map. Let's see the value. It is a dictionary. The keys are the cells and the value is another dictionary with keys as east, west, north and south and value is 0 or 1. 1 means the path in that direction is open and 0 means the path is closed. For example, for cell 11 one, just east is open and all other are closed. See that on the generated maze just the east direction is open. Similarly is the information of all other cells of the maze. There is also another class available in the PyMaze module which is named as agent. It can be used to place an agent on the maze. We can create the agent object and the first required input argument is the parent maze which will be my maze. By default it will place the agent on the start cell. The default shape of the agent is square and we can change that to an arrow shape using the optional parameter shape. Now to move the agent on some path, we need to define the path as a string of movement direction in terms of east, west, south and north. I am just specifying a random path here to test the movement of the agent following this direction. Then in the maze class, we have the method trace path and as input argument, we pass a dictionary with the key as the agent and value as path we want that agent to follow. So if I run this, you can see the agent is following the path specified as direction string. At the moment it is passing through the walls, but don't worry we will handle this while coding the wall following algorithm. You can also set the optional input argument footprints to true to see the trace of the complete path. So that's pretty much everything we need to set for the basic visualization and now we need to find this path string using the wall following algorithm. So I will make it the main program by placing this code inside the if statement double underscore name double underscore equal to double underscore main double underscore. It is a standard way to define the main program in Python. In case you don't know why we do this, you can check out the other video provided in the description. Now we will create the function wall follower. The first input argument is the maze let's say m. The first thing to start with is relating the four directions forward, left, right and backward with east, west, north and south. The problem is that east, west, north and south directions are fixed and at the beginning if the agent is in this orientation, then forward is in the north direction, left is west direction, back is south direction and right is at east direction. But when the agent will rotate in either clockwise or counterclockwise direction, the mapping will change and we have to update those. So I will do this by creating a dictionary, the keys will be the agent directions and value will be east, west, north or south. This is the initial state of the agent. Now let's create a function rotate clockwise to rotate the agent in the clockwise direction. When the agent is rotated in the clockwise direction, we will update the direction mapping. So I will declare this dictionary as a global variable. Let me take the keys of the direction dictionary as a list, which at starting orientation will be this list. And also take the values list, which at the starting orientation will be this list. When agent is rotated clockwise, these will be the new directions. And then to map those correctly to east, west, north or south, I need to rotate the values of this list. I will pick the last value of the list V, will make that value as the element of a list and will concatenate the starting three values of the list V. And then I will update the direction dictionary with the keys as the same previous list, 
but values as the rotated list. I can use the zip function and the dict constructor for this. The same we need for counterclockwise rotation. The only difference will be rotating the list of values in the other direction. I will start with the second value at index 1 to the last value and the first value is concatenated at the end of the list. Now let's create a function move forward for moving the agent one step forward. The input is the current cell of the agent inside the maze as two value tuple and output will be the next cell. While moving forward we need to consider if the forward direction is east or west or north or south. If forward direction is east, the next cell will be on the right side, so x index of the next cell will be the same as of the current cell and y index will be one more than that of the current cell. Similarly, we will do the calculation for the other three directions. All necessary functions have been created. Now let's complete the wall follower function. The current cell of the agent is the last cell by default, which is the last row and the last column. Now we will implement this algorithm. I have the pseudocode of the algorithm. Let me copy that. It is very simple. If we have reached the goal cell, we will end the process and other conditions and actions are according to this flowchart. Let's convert this to actual code. The goal cell is the cell 11. To check the wall on the left side, we will use the maze underscore map attribute of the maze. It is a dictionary and we will check the key as a current cell. The value is also a dictionary and we will check the east, west, north or south direction which corresponds to the left side of the agent. We will get that from the direction dictionary. If that is 0, it means there is a wall in that direction. Similarly, we will check if there is wall on the front direction. Then we have to rotate the agent in the clockwise direction. For that, we already created the function. Else, we have to move forward and we have the function for that as well. Here, we will use rotate counterclockwise function. And here again the move forward function. So this completes our algorithm. But in our main program we need a string of movement directions. So here in the move forward function, we also need to return the information of the forward direction. It can be done simply by returning that direction as well. I guess I had a little mistake here. Instead of west, it should be south. So here when the position of the agent is updated, we can get the value of the direction as well in some variable, for example, d. And here at the start, we can define a string variable path with the value as empty string. And after each forward movement, we can append that movement direction to the path variable. And finally, we'll return the path. Now here we will use the wall follower function to get the path and that's all we need. Let's run it. And you can see the agent following the left wall to reach to the goal cell. That's working fine, but you can see there was a dead end. The agent entered into the dead end and then it returned from there and moved to the goal cell. we can avoid this entry into the dead end. In case of any dead end, there is 180 degree rotation of the agent. East and west are 180 degree and south and north are at 180 degree. Let's print the path string to identify the dead ends and then we will remove those. There are three dead ends in this generated maze. Let's see this path string. See this south and north together. It means it moved to the south and then to north. So essentially it returned to the same cell. So in the generated path string, we should eliminate all such cases. 
Like here we have north and south together, the west and east together. So after the path is calculated we can check all these cases which are east-west together or west-east or north-south or south-north. We can replace those with the blank strings. But note one important point, suppose we have this string having the east-west together, then we will remove that pair. We will get this new string and now we are getting the south-north pair, which appeared after the east-west was removed. Hence we have to repeat this deletion process until all such pairs have removed. So instead of if statement, we can have a while loop here. See that it did not enter into this part which is the dead end. In practical case, if we have a physical agent, for example a robot, it will first follow the path with the dead ends and then will improve there to get a path without dead ends. So in the second attempt or a second agent can move on the path free of dead ends. Just to simulate that scenario, let's return two paths from this function. First the path with dead ends and second without dead ends. Let's call it path 2. Let's create two agents now. We can change the color of the agent as well by specifying the color as a string. Or we can import the color class available in the PyMaze module. And here we can specify the color class object. Let's call this agent as B. And now we will also move the agent B on the path free of dead ends. This is the first agent that will explore the path with dead ends. And now the second agent will not enter into the dead end part. Let's test it on a bigger maze like 20 by 30 maze. Let's also set the loop percent to 20. An important thing to note is that when we have the multiple paths, there can be a case that agent will get stuck into an infinite loop. One such example can be a path like this. The wall following algorithm guarantees the path if it is a perfect maze and can stuck into a loop if there are multiple paths. Here I have made the loop percent as just 20% so I will not get many multiple paths and I hope I will not get an infinite loop. I will just check the second agent with dead end free path. You can see the agent following the left wall and heading towards the goal. So that's all from this lesson. If you find this helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Moreover, see the other content related to Python programming, PLC programming, machine VN, sensors and instrumentation etc. available on the channel. Thanks for watching.